Hey, what is up guys, Bonds here. So today I wanna show you how to sound design your own drum samples because there aren't very many really good tutorials out there on that kind of topic. So I've been doing a lot of drum sound design over the past two months or so, and I really wanna show you a very in-depth video on how to make an 808, a kick drum, a snare, a clap, a hi-hat, and so open hat in there too, just so we can get the whole entire list going. But the main thing is that I wanna show you how to make every single one of these sounds using Vital Synth. All right, so this is Vital right here, and we're gonna make an 808 first, and basically the main thing that we wanna start out with is let's just go into the MIDI roll, Let's place an 808 on C3, and I'm going to change the um, initial preset to factory basic shape so that we have a sine wave. And if we open up span and we hit play, as you can see, the tone is like at like 68 hertz. That's not right. We got to move it down by another octave so that it is more around 50 hertz or 40 hertz. So as you can see, that's around 45 hertz. Now that we have the 808 around 45 hertz, I have my oscillator 2 turned on and just playing a simple um, saw wave. So it sounds like that. Now, of course, that sounds annoying and it sounds kind of weird at this moment, but we're using some filtering stuff to make it sound good. Before we can do any of that, we got to have kind of the envelope of an 808. So what we're going to do is to turn this mode to envelope mode and let's turn this to seconds and the frequency around um, 1.6 seconds or so and turn this 8 to 1 and then we're just gonna kind of draw in the envelope shape. So I'm gonna start with a quick dip down just to get the good transient. And then when we have the transient, we can work on the rest of the decay of the 808. So now let's take this LFO one and make it so it automates the level of the sine, makes the level of the saw. So that should be our transient. And now if we put, pull this up and turn this up a bit. So now you can see oscillator one is going to the filter one and oscillator two is going to filter two. So I'm gonna turn on filter two and I'm gonna cut out some of the high end of the saw wave. So that sounds better already. All right, we're almost done with the fundamental sound of it. I'm gonna turn the sample um, white noise and we're gonna go from LFO one to this level here. And now if we bring this in, you might think, why are we using a white noise in an 808? It works guys, it works. Right, so the very first effect I'm going to use is I'm going to use an EQ and basically the idea of this EQ is I'm going to use the mid band and I'm going to just basically boost the mid range of this sound a little bit more. So we're going to go right around here. So I'm using a soft clipping distortion and let's just boost this a little bit on the drive. So we're just cutting out some of the really high end. I have a spin zeta weight right here. And let's compare what it looks like. As you can see, there's a lot more like just distortion in the spin zeta weight. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna grab an M wave shaper on here. I'm gonna go into um, M saturator. I'm gonna use the classic clip preset. It sounds like this. This plugin isn't always free, but sometimes it does become free. And if you can find it free, you definitely pick it up because it's an amazing plugin. What I'm gonna do is right around um, 20 hertz exactly, really, um, I'm gonna use a very soft um, high pass filter. So the thing is that we're not gonna be going like um, super sharp and putting it way down here. Listen to this sound. That sounds really, really bad compared to the dry signal. It's so much worse when you add the sharp um, high pass. So you've got to have a really gentle high pass and then put it way down there. Okay, here's the main thing. And this completely blew my mind when I first heard about it. I'm gonna use a very, very sharp um, EQ curve, EQ bell curve, right around 78 Hertz. But we're gonna be going down on this section. You might be thinking in your head, 78 Hertz, that's like the bassiness of the 808. Why are you cutting out the bassiness? I got this idea directly from the Spins 808. I noticed the Spins 808 has a huge dip right there. Um, so I've been using it on my other 808s and it sounds really good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this 808 to another track and I'm gonna add a reverb to my 808. Pretty hefty fade in on it. Sound something like that. Now we just put them together. Now you can't really tell that the other one is coming in. So I'm going to add ozone 9 elements because on the EQ section, you can actually use mid side EQ. So turn on the side, solo the side. I think it's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to route this to an aux one track and route this to the same aux one track. So I'm going to add ozone 9 elements on here and I'm going to turn off all these other EQ stuff. And I'm um, just use the maximizer. 
sounds really, really good. I'm going to just hit this little record button and record it. Sounds like that. That is what our 808 sounds like right now. I am just curious. I'm going to freeze this and I'm going to see what it sounds like if I get rid of the initial transient. And I'm going to use a just kind of a fade out. So it sounds like this. And then as you can see, it looks like that basically. All right, so let's move on the kick drum. Let's get into it. Whoa. Place a note at C3 and kick drums are not that hard. Um, you just got to be careful with them. So I'm going to use a sign on my kick drum and to listen to this one first. I might want to pitch it down an octave. Um, let's go to envelope mode and turn this to a one and let's make this um, time a second. So let's go to like really short. Nice. So now I'm going to copy this um, LFO pattern to this LFO and let's do the same thing like envelope frequency. Let's actually make it really fast frequency like 0 0.07 and route this to the pitch knob. Now I'm going to route this to filter one as it already is. All right, so now I'm going to use a distortion on here, a soft clip. Most of the kick drum beefiness comes outside of the plugin itself. So basically we're going to stick with that. And now let's work on everything else using plugins. First thing I'm going to add on here is a um, bit crusher. That's good. Now I'm going to add Devastator 2 on here. I don't really know how to use this plugin yet, but it's a multi-band distortion plugin. It just gives it a little bit more of a room. If you know what I mean. I'm hearing this around like 400 hertz range. And also let's do high pass. So basically we're just, we're cutting out things that sound kind of boxy in my opinion. And just like that, we have the kick drum. It was pretty, really simple. The kick drums are probably the hardest sound for me to work on, um, but I think this one turned out good. Let's go on the clap now. This is by far the most complicated sound in my opinion. Um, let's just get into it. Woo! Okay, so I grabbed in this random other clap to kind of show you the reason that a clap sounds like a clap is because of these little so what we've got to do is we've got to replicate that same exact um, volume automation inside of Vital. So basically what my plan is, is I'm going to use Vital to have eight sections. Actually, let's make it nine just for the sake of having a little bit extra time. And basically what we can do then is we can have all these little LFO um, automation things snap to the grid on the nine. So I don't think I explained that very well, but basically we're going to be making a kind of a function like this. So it has one, two, three transients and then one big decay. All right, so now what we gotta do is we gotta turn this on to a, um, the white noise thing. We're gonna route this to the level and we gotta turn this to uh, envelope mode. Right clicking on here, enter MIDI value, enter value, and then 0 0.085. So that's what it sounds like now. That's that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So now we gotta use um, some EQ stuff so we can make it sound more like a clap. So I'm going to use a um, blend knob all the way up to the two setting and make sure this is going to filter one. So claps usually don't have much low end. They also don't have too much high end them in either. So let's also route this one. So we have the filter one going to into it. Let's stick with the distortion first. Do kind of an EQ curve like this. Um, you might as well you might as well want to um, kind of just copy what I have and basically just making like a little a little bump. All right, so now I want to show you some of the interesting effects that you can use to make your stuff sound cooler. I'm gonna turn on a chorus effect, which is gonna sound weird. I'm gonna turn the delays very short. It's all of them really short. Basically, we're just adding a little bit of stereoness to it. Or after just a little bit of stereoness that's now outside a compressor single band number one mistake with claps is that you have too much high end i'm gonna duck down some high end now our, our clap looks like this and, and like think about it we originally used this like a reference and now our new one looks like this those are very, very similar. And then let's add a transient shape around to this. I think I need a little bit less high end.
nice and so this is what our clap looks like finally it's relatively compressed um but that should be fine um basically i'm going to tell you some little keys about making claps so if you look in the span here basically everything we have is around um 600 hertz and above but you can definitely notice that the key frequencies are around 6k hertz and around 1k hertz a big mistake i see a lot of people make is that they put a whole bunch of stuff above 11k hertz but really we should have more of a high pass down here that is why when you're adding in high end you should probably be using an eq um, bell instead of an eq shelf okay, so now i'm going to cut the start and end points and let's move on to the snare so i can kind of show you the differences between snare and claps let's get into it Woo! so the very first step is i'm going to make this uh, um sine wave here I'm also going to turn on a second oscillator and make another sine wave. So now I'm going to also transpose this down by an octave because if you actually look at the normal snare, as you can see here, what I got is I have one main frequency here, I have another main frequency here, another main frequency here. Now, if you actually in inspect on what these frequencies are, we've got B5, which is 1K Hertz, B4, which is 484 Hertz, B3, which is 240 Hertz. As you can clearly tell, what we've got is we have octaves of the same tone. In the reference, it also had one third pitch down at like another octave. You saw that it had three fundamental frequencies. Let's do that. Let's put this at 24. So now if we play a note, it's gonna play all those tones. So I'm gonna make a shape like this. Seconds mode. And now what I'm gonna do is turn on the white noise. And I'm gonna copy this exact same LFO to this one over here except on this one it's basically gonna have like two transients that are really quick grab this to the level of the white noise so i'm gonna change all three of our oscillators to filter one and our sample to filter two and basically what i can do with that is i can filter out some of the really high notes high sounds of our um sample and now i'm gonna turn on filter one and then we'll take the input from the filter two so that um, basically all of our sounds are going through this one filter. And then we're gonna mer mer merge it to the blend two section. And the idea is that we're just kind of emphasizing the low end. All right, so there's one last thing I want to show you how to make it a little bit more snappy, because I know that's what we really need to change, is I want to change this to seconds mode, and I want to turn this to envelope, and we're gonna make a function kind of like this. Now this is gonna be a very, very snappy, so we're gonna make this set like crazy short and route this to the um, pitch of every single one of these little things. Okay, let's add a distortion on here now. So now you can see that the distortion really brings out the tone. Probably in the fact that it's um, kind of um, compressing it. Now we're gonna add a chorus filter on here. Just like I showed you before. Nice. All right, so now I'm going to just record my snare in. Sounds like that. There's like a big build up right around here. And I really like Ozone 9 elements for the maximizer. Let's see if this cymatics plugin is good or not. Yeah, let's freeze the sound and see what it sounds like. I'm actually going to make this a little bit um, less short by using Couture. What that does is it kind of brings up the um, tail of the sound and it brings down the transient. That's now what I'm gonna do. So this is only really works for trap kind of snares. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer this other clap on top of it. But now what we can do is kind of mix between these two claps. Now if I go to my master channel and I add like a Diablo. All right, so this, and like this snare took a long time to make, but that sounds so good. Because the idea is that you actually use your sounds in actual beats so that you can figure out like, okay, well, I usually think it sounds better if I pitch it up by three to semitones. So then you actually re-export the sound three semitones up, maybe do a couple EQ changes, and you just kind of finesse your sounds until they're absolutely perfect. All right, so let's go into the hi-hat. Let's get into it. Woo! So now we're making the hi-hats, and hi-hats are easy and hard. Um, let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to just turn on the white noise here. I'm going to make this an envelope. I'm going to make the seconds very short. Um, you know, 0.22 seconds. And then I'll make this high. I'll make this short. Um, if you link the envelope to the level, just like this, you got a high up. Now I'm gonna route this to f filter two. And we're gonna turn this on blend two. Yeah, that's better. We're getting more of a tick sound now. 
Um, I'm gonna turn on my compressor possibly. Now I'm gonna use a high pass. No. So we wanna keep a little bit of mid range. All right. It's probably as good as we're gonna get it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just render this out in audio. And I'm gonna show you that it's probably not gonna sound as good as you think it will. So now I'm just gonna do a very simple pattern, just something like this. I think we got too much low end in our hi hi-hat sample. You can do that pulling this over. That's better. Basically the idea is that you use the vital synth to get like a white noise and do some basic EQing. Um, but really the way that you make a good hi-hat is that you actually test it in context in an actual hi-hat loop. Anyway, this one sounds good. Let's move on to open hat. Woo! All right, so open hats are very similar to um, hi-hats. We're basically gonna be doing basically the same process, just a little bit slower. Um, so we have the white noise here. Let's turn this to a envelope mode um, LFO. And we're gonna make kind of a sound that looks like this or so. Now let's route this to filter one and do some preliminary kind of things. So I'm actually going to um, kind of click a second thing right here. Like, so it has a bit of a transient. Get another filter out and click on filter one so that all the signal is going through. Okay, so now I'm going to add a reverb onto this. This reverb sounds really good in this VST. Right, now it's out of EQ. Low cut. I think I'm going to make this just really long. And now I'm going to use a delay on it. And I think you can do ping pong. And I make this um, very short. So let's do 64th note. Nice. So obviously that doesn't sound much like a hi-hat you would use. But I can hear it. I can hear what we're going to do with this to make it sound good. And let's zoom in here and let's not have such a long decay on the... Nice. Right, so sometimes you just want to be creative. And you want to try something new. So what I'm going to show you right here is I'm going to copy the exact same sound two times in a row. So we have the exact same sound. First one is going to be panned all the way to the left. Second one panned all the way to the right. Now I'm going to grab this plugin called Simple Side. And it is basically a volume automation plugin. So on the right side, we can do some volume automation. On the left side, we can do different automations. It's like, it just shakes a little bit. In the outro of this video, I'm going to play a beat that is completely made using these six drum sounds. Um, so what I'm basically doing there is if a sound sounds a little bit off, I'm going to tweak it until it sounds good. And I recommend that you do the same thing for all your sounds. Um, but yeah, if you thought this video was helpful, let me know in the comment section. I will see you guys next week, Thursday. See you guys later. Woo! I literally just turned off my camera. I forgot to say something. We're going to have a sample pack dropping next week, Thursday. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys that sample pack, giving it to you guys for free. Also, I recorded this entire video in 4K, so I think it's going to be like 150 gigabytes. Anyway, see you guys later. Woo!